We at Peabody Myers have been in the business of manufacturing equipment for the sewer line and catch basin cleaning field for about 25 years now. Our product line represents the most efficient pneumatic cleaning and jet rotting equipment available today. The purpose of this tape presentation is to provide you with a general walk around description of the operational systems and features of the Model 810 Vector Jet Rotter, a presentation of the many safety features designed into the Vector, the safety procedures recommended when in the operating mode, and a general startup overview. As with all mechanical equipment, proper operation and a well-planned maintenance program are of vital importance in obtaining maximum performance and long life. With this in mind, the operator should become very familiar with the owner's manuals, covering warranty, safety, identification, and registration for the Vector Jet Rotter. The owner's manual, especially with regard to safety, is of the utmost importance. With the Vector Jet Rotter, the vacuum cleaning and water pump systems produce high pressures and high flows. Proper operation and proper maintenance consequently is a must. Safety is always foremost. Prior to actual operation, the operator should make a visual inspection of both the Vector and the truck chassis. This visual inspection should include a check for any kind of water or oil leaks. Check all transmission and hydraulic systems for leaks. Check both engines for oil and water. Once the daily inspection has been completed and the operator feels secure that all is in good working order, the unit is ready to go to work. Filling the fresh water tank is the first task at hand prior to heading for the job site. To fill the water tank, the operator should position the truck even with the fire hydrant.
Before attaching the unit's fill hose to the hydrant, it is recommended that the operator flush out the hydrant's lines until the water is clear. This will prevent the flow of rust particles into the water tank. To assist in this operation, a hydrant wrench comes as standard equipment on the Vector Jet Rotter. In compliance with OSHA regulations, the fill mechanism on the water tank has an air gap feature. This special design prevents the return of any water from the unit back into the city water system, possibly causing contamination. A water level gauge is provided on the side of the water tank. It allows the operator to easily see when the water tank is full. After the tank is full, the hydrant should be shut off and the fill hose disconnected. All excess water should be drained off from the fill hose prior to replacing it in its storage compartment. Recap the hydrant and you are ready to go to the work site. At the work site, the operator's first step is to position the vector properly. The ideal placement for cleaning catch basins is to position the vacuum hose nozzle located on the front passenger side of the vehicle directly over the manhole. Before exiting the truck cab, the operator should engage the PTO and leave the truck engine running. The truck engine powers the rotor pump. The emergency brake must be set. All rotating lights and flashers, arrow boards, and disability lights should be turned on. Safety cones should be placed to warn oncoming traffic. The power takeoff mechanism is located inside the truck cab. This is commonly referred to as the PTO. The PTO, when engaged, is used to activate a hydraulic pump that supplies oil to the Peabody Myers patented high-pressure water pump. 
This hydraulic pump also operates the unit's hose reel and truck hoist systems. If the truck chassis is equipped with a manual transmission, first place the parking brake in the engaged position. Press in the clutch and move the PTO switch from the out to the in position. Then release the clutch slowly. The red light should light up. This will indicate that the engaged power takeoff gears are rotating and are powering the hydraulic pump. When not in use, the PTO should be kept in the disengaged or the off position. If the vector is equipped with an automatic transmission, the operator should put the transmission in neutral and set the parking brake. With the parking brake engaged, the operator should then apply pressure to the standard brakes and put the truck transmission into drive. Then move the PTO lever to the on position. The hydraulic pump will have been engaged. Now the operator should shift the transmission back into the neutral position. This will disengage the automatic transmission and leave the PTO engaged. After the shift back to neutral, the operator can discontinue applying pressure to the brakes. We now have live hydraulic power. Hydraulic fluid is now flowing. The operator can now proceed to the passenger side of the vehicle to start up the unit's vacuum system. First, the operator should make certain that the auxiliary engine clutch is disengaged from the transmission. The long lever should be in the down position. If the auxiliary engine is equipped with a high temperature, low oil pressure shutdown, the operator should hold up the high low shutdown switch in the override position until the auxiliary engine's oil pressure has increased enough to allow the engine to run. To prevent damage to the starter motor, the starter button should never be held in for more than 15 seconds. After the engine has started, increase the engine speed by turning the throttle out until the engine has reached approximately 1,000 RPM. The operator can now proceed to the front end of the unit and plug in the pendant control. This working tool allows the operator to position the overhead boom assembly to its proper working position. This particular model 810 Vector has a telescoping boom. Consequently, a seven button pendant control is provided. Buttons for up, down, left and right, buttons for extending and retracting the boom, and a red kill switch. The red kill switch overrides all electrical systems and allows the operator to stop all boom movement. The kill switch is provided for the occasion when the boom is moving and no buttons will stop it. On the standard four-way position pendant control, there are five buttons. Buttons for up, down, left and right, and the red kill switch. With the pendant control device plugged in, the operator can release the tension off the storage plate and disconnect the vacuum tube. By pressing the left direction button, the vacuum pipe can slowly be moved out of the way in preparation for the lowering and insertion of the water rotting hose into the sewer line. The flexible hose guide with an attached nylon cord provides a valuable assist in lowering the sewer nozzle and directing it into the appropriate sewer line. The hose guide can also be positioned so that it is half in and half out of the sewer line opening. This position prevents a damaging of the rotter hose as it enters and is retrieved from the line during the rotting procedure. 
At no time should the operator operate the machine if there's a cut or tear in the plastic polyurethane cover of the high pressure water hose. The hose should never be mended using any menders or hose ends other than those supplied and recommended by Peabody Myers. All jet rotting hose have different dimensions and characteristics. The hose manufacturers have designed ends and menders specifically for that hose. Using any other menders or ends may result in damage to the equipment or even possible injury to the operator. Now let's turn to the operational controls of the Vector's jet rotting system. These controls are located on the front end mounted hose reel. There are two gauges. The gauge on the lower left is the pilot pressure gauge. It should never read under 130 pounds. On the Vector with the standard 60 gallon per minute pump system, this gauge will be located approximately one foot higher on the control panel. This particular Vector has an 80 gallon per minute system. This pressure gauge shows how much pressure is available on the pilot valve. And what is the pilot valve? The pilot valve is the shifting mechanism that activates the cycling of the jet rotter pump. If the pressure ever reads under 130 pounds, the operator should remove the front cover and adjust the relief valve. The gauge on the right is the water pressure gauge. This gauge shows in pounds per square inch at what level the high pressure water pump is operating. The Vector Jet Rotter should run at either 2000 or 2500 PSI, depending upon the system that the unit has been supplied with. A point of note, both of these gauges are filled with a liquid called glycerin. It is not water and is provided in this narration simply as information. There are three ball valves located on the jet rotting control panel. On the left side, on the side of the hose reel, is a three-way ball valve. This valve actuates the rotter pump. In the up position, the pump is on. In the down position, the pump is off. The two ball valves located in the front are designed to open and shut the water supply from the water pump, the jet rotter system, and the handgun cleaning system. To allow a place for water to flow, both of these valves should never at the same time be in the off position. Otherwise, the operator will undoubtedly experience an engine stall. The larger valve on the top controls the water to the jet rotter system. When in the straight up and down position, it is in the on position. When the operator is working the high pressure water rotting system and he wants to activate the handgun system, should follow this step-by-step -step procedure. Turn the three-way ball valve located on the left side to the down or the off position to turn the water pump off. After the water pump has stopped cycling, turn the handgun lever to the straight up and down or on position and turn the jet riding lever to the left, the off position. Now, turn the three-way ball valve back to the on or the up position, thereby reactivating the water pump to operate the handgun cleaning system. The handgun system has coupler locations at both the front and rear of the unit. The handgun water stream should never be directed at another person as the system runs at 600 PSI. On the left side of the control panel at the front end of the unit is a black knob control. This is a flow control device. This control knob adjusts the volume of hydraulic fluid flow to the hydraulic hose reel motor. This flow control allows the operator to adjust the speed of the rotting hose as it works its way into the sewer line. It also allows the operator to vary the rate of speed with which he retrieves the hose back onto the hose reel. The control knob on the far right side is a diverter valve. In the in position, it diverts hydraulic fluid to the motor for hose reel rotation. In the out position, the valve diverts hydraulic fluid to the built-in tip cylinder on the reel to allow the hose reel to be lowered and raised hydraulically to gain access to the chassis engine. The double chain, double sprocket drive mechanism for the front mounted hose reel should always be maintained in a reasonably tight position. The entire hydraulic motor assembly can be moved to the right 
by simply loosening the four bolts and sliding the whole assembly over, utilizing the bolt on the back of the hose reel motor. Also located on the front hose reel assembly is a warning device. It is located on the left side. The operator should never operate the water rotting system when the red light is on. When the red light comes on, the operator should turn the throttle knob down until the light goes off. This red light indicator warns that either the pressure or the flow in the unit's hydraulic system has been exceeded beyond the rated capacities. This could be an indicator that you have a worn out nozzle. It could also indicate that the filter screen and or water fill location for the water pump is plugged and needs cleaning. Easy to handle over center quick clamps allow for efficient coupling of the vacuum pipe. It is important to use the catch basin nozzle at the working end of the vacuum pipe. A serrated steel end with holes is by design. This allows air to be injected even when the end is submerged in water. The vacuum system on the Vactor utilizes an air conveyance concept. It is not a true vacuum machine. The centrifugal compressor design needs air to move material. When the nozzle is submerged in water, a cavitation type noise will be heard from the fan. In this circumstance, the Vactor's vacuum cleaning system will simply pull a column of water up to a limit and then pull no more. Consequently, it is of vital importance that the operator maintain the vacuum pipe nozzle above the water level. Let's now look at the vacuum cleaning operation of the Vector Jet Rotter. The first step involves the lowering of the proper length of vacuum piping into the catch basin. Again, easy to handle quick clamps facilitate a smooth assembly of the lightweight vacuum piping. A brief note while commenting on the vacuum pipe handling, to avoid possible bodily injury, the operator must never allow any parts of the body to come into close proximity of the working end of the vacuum pipe when the vacuum system is operating. The operator can now proceed back to the auxiliary engine control station to engage the fan system. This is done by increasing the auxiliary engine throttle to approximately 1000 RPM and then engaging the clutch. The clutch is engaged by pushing up on the clutch handle until the operator feels the fan start to turn. Then the clutch handle is again pushed up until it snaps into position. At the same time, the throttle should be pulled all the way out. At the front end workstation, the high pressure water system is turned on by pulling the three-way ball valve control lever to the up or vertical position. The pressure indicator on the water pressure gauge will begin to increase. By turning the throttle out, the operator can establish proper operating pressure, which will fall from 0 to 2000 or 2500 psi, depending upon the water system supplied on that particular vector. The operator can now start feeding the rotter hose into the sewer line by pushing the lever control valve toward the hose reel. It is important that the rotter hose be fed into the sewer line in and against the flow direction. When the working nozzle is retrieved, loosened debris will return with the regular flow of the line. The speed with which the rotter hose travels through the sewer line can be adjusted by rotating the flow control knob. If the sewer line is plugged, the operator can feed the hose into the line in increments of 25 to 30 feet and then retrieve that length of hose and repeat the process. This procedure will help prevent the sewer line from blocking up with debris behind the working nozzle and not allow the debris to flow freely back to the manhole where it will be vacuumed up. 
Reversing the rotter hose back out of the sewer line is accomplished by pulling the control valve lever down. When retrieving the rotter hose, it is important that the water rotting pressure be maintained. The nozzle is performing a cleaning function as it is being retrieved. To prevent excess water spray and possible damage to the nozzle, the operator should reduce the water pressure when the nozzle approaches the sewer line entrance. This is done by turning the throttle control in. The water pump can then be turned off by pulling the three-way valve lever to the off position. On most occasions, the operator will want to hook up the Vector's efficient high-pressure handgun cleaning system to provide the final cleanup of the manhole. A quick coupler connect is located on the lower left side of the front end control panel. To activate this system, follow this step-by-step -step procedure. Turn the front half-inch ball valve to the vertical position or the on position. Then turn the one-inch ball valve located above the handgun valve to the off position parallel with the handgun valve. Now turn the three-way ball valve to the on position and turn the throttle slightly out to increase the RPMs on the chassis engine. The operator is now ready to proceed. For operator safety, the handgun system has a relief valve that will activate at 600 PSI. The operator should on no occasion attempt to overspeed the high pressure water pump beyond the 600 PSI level. At all times during the operation of the factory jet water sewer cleaning systems, the operator must pay attention to the location of the debris box's flow control indicator that illustrates the level of debris in the unit's debris body. The operator must never overfill the debris chamber with water and debris. An overfill situation will cause waste material to pass through the unit's air conveying system and out into the atmosphere. To allow for longer sewer cleaning activity before the necessity of dumping the debris, a drain system is provided and located on the back door of the debris box. By simply unfurling the drain hose, the water that has been collected in the debris chamber can be permitted to drain back down into the manhole. We'll cover this in detail later. When the cleaning activity is completed, the operator can retrieve all of the rotter hose back onto the hose reel. The rotter hose wind guide provides a valuable assist in getting a uniform distribution of the hose back onto the hose reel. The vacuum pipe can now be removed from the manhole. It is recommended that a vacuum be maintained until the vacuum tube has been removed from the water and debris at the bottom of the manhole. This continuation of the vacuum allows air to pass through the entire vacuum system, thereby cleaning it out.
The vacuum tube can then be reattached to the front bumper mounted storage plate. By pulling the clutch lever down on the auxiliary engine, the vacuum system is shut down. The folded blue nylon drain hose referred to earlier is located in the storage brackets on the door of the Vector's debris body. It is used to drain off excess liquid prior to taking the unit to the dump site. The unit should be moved forward at the working site to a position that allows the blue hose to be unfurled and dropped straight down into the manhole, thereby allowing the water to drain out. If the debris body is less than one half full, the operator may want to raise the debris body to aid the excess water dumping operation. This will require the engagement of the PTO to achieve hydraulic power to the debris box hoist mechanism. Prior to moving the vehicle, the operator should disengage the PTO. To prevent damage to the transmission, the vector should never be moved with the PTO engaged. the water drain off operation is completed, the easy to handle nylon drain hose can be refolded and placed back into the storage brackets. A debris box safety prop is provided for those occasions when the operator is working around the unit with the debris box raised. It is extremely important that this safety device be used. At the dump site, the operator should locate a level and relatively dry area to facilitate an easy entrance and exit. When properly positioned, the vehicle's emergency brake and PTO should be engaged. To prevent any premature spillage, the unit's vacuum system should then be activated. By starting the vacuum system and running it at maximum governed speed, with the vacuum tube securely attached to the front bumper storage plate, an effective vacuum will be created in the debris body, holding the rear door tight. Now the operator can disconnect the five over center clamps on the rear door assembly. The 
vacuum system can then be disengaged and shut down. The debris body hoist can now be utilized to assist the dumping of the debris. The box should be elevated to the maximum 50 degree angle. If the vector is equipped with a debris body flush out system, this system can be activated by turning on the ball valve located by the water pump. The water pump controls at the hose reel station must be in the off position. A debris box door body prop represents another vector safety device. It is located on the interior of the rear door and should be properly positioned when there is any occasion requiring work to be performed between the door and the debris box. The powerful handgun cleaning system also comes in handy during the final cleanup operation. The dividends over the long term of keeping the unit clean and well maintenanced cannot be overstated. Superior performance and long standing dependability will result. Safety must also be at the forefront. The operator can now lower the debris box back to its normal working position and close up the rear door by reconnecting the five easy to handle over center door clamps on the rear door assembly. A simple turning of the T-clamp locking design assures proper closing. This concludes our coverage on the working systems of the Vector Jet Rotter. We at Peabody Myers are proud of our line of Vactor sewer and catch basin cleaners, and it is important to us that our customers obtain a thorough understanding of the features and capabilities of our equipment. We hope this walk around tape presentation will assist you in becoming familiar with the operation of the Vector Jet Rotter. It is vital that you also read thoroughly the operations and safety manuals that were supplied with your unit. Good luck and happy vectoring.